coincidences that aren't coincidences. Love them so much. And every time I go out to speak somewhere, I'm always asked, well, what music do you want? What songs do you want them to play? And I always say, well, here's the topic that I'm going to speak on. And I trust that the music will follow perfectly with that theme. And it always does. So thank you so much. That was such a beautiful introduction to today's topic. And the daily word as well, right? And in those moments where we think that it's something is dying or, or painful or hurts in some way, that we are protected, that God's love and light is there, that the rose is the seed that is waiting to come back up again in the spring. How beautiful. And that it all just blends together, always. And that's what happens when we let go and we trust. Not trusting ourselves, our ego, but trusting God. That's something that is so much bigger than our individual personality. I had a story that I wanted to share today. This is from the book Illusions, The Reluctant Messiah by Richard Bach. I'm seeing some, some heads nodding, so hoping this is not the first time everyone's heard this because I love this story. It actually is sort of the prologue before the story even begins. There's this little story about river creatures. And the river creatures live at the bottom of a beautiful crystal river. And the river creature's way of life is to cling to the grass at the bottom of the river. Have we ever been there? Clinging to the grass at the bottom of the river while the river floats over us. And we think this is a beautiful way of living, right? It's, it's peaceful, it's serene. We know what to expect from day to day. Everything looks the same. What a beautiful view we have of the world around us while we stay right here. Well, in the story, there's this one river creature who says, I need to let go. And, and he's like, you know, I just feel like there's something telling me there's more to life than clinging. And the other river creatures look at him, point, and go, fool. Fool, you let go and that crystal river you worship is going to smash you upon those rocks downstream. And he says, all right, I'm willing to take the risk. Because if I stay here just clinging to these reeds, this grass, any longer, I'm going to die of boredom. I trust that the current knows where it's going. So he lets go. Have you been there? I trust, right? I'm feeling led. I'm feeling called to let go of this way of being in my life and do something else. So we let go. And oh, I feel so blissful for like 10 minutes. And then life throws us the rocks. In his case, this poor little river creature, my picture this little guy, and he hits the rocks. It hurts. The rocks don't feel good. He hits them, he tumbles, smashing from rock to rock. Have we been here? We let go, yay, oh, lovely, 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 and then poof, something happens. Could be in our lives an illness, could be losing a job, could be a major move that we weren't expecting, could be the birth of a child who totally transforms our life from what we thought it was ever going to be. All these things come up and they're the rocks that tumble us around. The rocks sometimes feel painful, but we don't need to suffer in them. So our little river creature goes into the rocks, gets tumbled around in the rocks. My little rock today. Uh, it's a pretty soft one. <laughs> so he's getting smashed, but then he breaks free of it, gets through the rocks, and ah, once again, gliding down through the river, peaceful, serene, letting the current take him where it will. And at this point... So where he's gliding along and he floats over another little village of river creatures. And what are they all doing? Clinging. And they look up at him and see him floating through the water and cry out, look, see, it's the Messiah. He, fl 
lies. And he points right back down at them and says, I am no more Messiah than you. All you have to do is let go. Let go. <sighs> and it is so true. We get stuck and we point to others and say, wow, look, they did it. Whether it's a personality or a spiritual leader that we follow, somebody who writes these books that we just think are so inspirational. And we point to them and we say, they've got it figured out. Their life is beautiful, flowing in the Crystal River, and I am stuck here. And all we have to do is let go. All right, so letting go sounds so easy, right? It does. And when we know the rocks are out there, not so easy anymore. Not so easy anymore. In our lives, the rocks serve a purpose. And I used to think that the rocks were just there as barriers to me getting to my good. I used to look down at the rocks because they happened, right? I would be going along and then I'd say, ah, yes, here's my next step. This is what I need to do. And I'm a person who leaps a lot, crazy leaps. And my husband jumps with me, so yay him, but crazy us, right? Because what do we do? We go, yay, ah, rocks! And we hit him again. And it happens every single time. And every time it happens, I was always going, why do we always hit this? Why does there have to be this point? Because this point sucks. And I don't like it. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel pretty. It doesn't feel like what I felt intuitively that I was being led to do. And yet every time we hit them. And my husband goes, and every time we get through it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it was this story, the river creature story, that Richard Bach so perfectly captured what it is like, what this process is like. Because chances are he hit more rocks somewhere down the line. Right? We don't let go once. We let go, we let go, we let go. And the rocks keep tumbling us. The rocks serve a purpose. And the moment that I was able to recognize and thank the rocks, for the gift that they bring in my life, it transformed everything. Because now when I hit them, because we're going to, I look at that experience and I'm like, oh, well, you know what? This still kind of sucks, but I know I will get through this. And I know that I will come out transformed. And I know there is a reason for these rocks. And I look forward to a year down the line, five years down the line, however long it takes to get to that point and look back and go, aha. Here's where those rocks led me. Robert Brummett, one of my um, teachers over at Unity Institute and Seminary, has written a fantastic book called Finding Yourself in Transition. Great book if ever you hit the rocks. Or you're in the process of tumbling through them. Robert writes, every change is a type of death a death to an old way of living or being. Yet ironically, change, a dying to the old, is one of the defining characteristics of growth. If we cling continuously, we don't grow. We don't change. And that voice that we hear in prayer and in meditation, our highest wisdom within ourselves, our Christ nature, awareness of God present in everything that whispers to us, here is what you can be. Here is what you can do. And it calls to our heart and it tells us all of these beautiful things that we can experience. When we say, I need to stay here and I need to hang on to what this looks like, we're denying that voice that's calling us forward. And when we say, I trust you, I let go, we open to the possibility of change, the possibility of being transformed into that which we know we are. In our hearts, we know we are capable of being that floating river creature, but we don't always claim it. 
Robert, one time in class, was sharing with us the word crisis. Right? Sounds horrible. None of us like to be in crisis. But the root of the word can be uh, translated into this combination of challenge and opportunity. So we change it from crisis being labeled bad to this is a potential for opportunity in this. And we can start looking at things differently. Start being able to embrace whatever shows up. Embracing what is. Not labeling it right, wrong, good, bad experience. And being fully present in that experience. And moving through it. One of the times that my husband and I said, we jump, here we go. We were living in San Diego at the time. And we just got this notion of, hey, we want to move somewhere new. Why not? So in, in one of our evening conversations, my husband was in the kitchen. I was sitting at the computer at the time. And he's like, where do you think we should move? Because, you know, we didn't have anywhere in mind. We just thought, we'll go somewhere new, something different. Mind you, we had moved to San Diego from Rhode Island. So moving wasn't brand new to us. So we were debating, you know, well, maybe Colorado, middle of the country, that could be nice, mountains. Maybe southeast somewhere, never lived there. Why not give it a try? So we're having this conversation, and I open up my email, and in it, I kid you not, there is a message whose the subtitle on it is, consider moving to North Carolina. <laughs> so, so I jokingly, ha ha. What do you think? It says we should consider moving to North Carolina. He's like, well, let's look into that. Let's look into North Carolina as a choice. Guess where we moved? North Carolina. It wasn't just because of that email. I mean, we ended up, it was something, the Southeast was something we were thinking on. And, you know, as we were doing our research, we're like, oh, very family friendly. We were ready to have a family. San Diego, we were concerned about having a family there and the price of living there. So we're like, all right, we'll move to North Carolina. Sounds good, right? We've got it all settled. Picked out an apartment online, sight unseen. Neither of us had ever, like, been to North Carolina. So we planned this whole thing out from San Diego. We didn't go out there and visit. We planned it from San Diego because we're trusting people. You see where this is going. And actually, the apartment worked out well. But the day we were getting ready to move, it had been raining for like two weeks straight in San Diego. And you know the song, It Never Rains in Southern California? It usually doesn't. So when it rains for two weeks straight, you've got floods, you've got mudslides. It was not pretty. The day that we were going to leave, my car wouldn't start. So we get a U-Haul, a different trailer for the car for the U-Haul. So we can just push the car up there. That was fun. I was in the car when they pushed it up onto the trailer. Yeah. It's a little bumpy start. So the car's on there. We're loading up everything in the pouring rain. We get ready to go. We're like, OK. Finally, you know, hours after we thought we would be leaving, we're finally on the road. And we hit the mountains in California, because you know, you've got to go over the mountains to get out to the other side, get over to Arizona. Well, what was rain on the coast is what in the mountains? Snow. Yeah, lots of snow. Windy mountain roads. Maybe they had plowed it at some point during the week, but you couldn't tell at this point. So here we are, our U-Haul. My in-laws were there too. They had the RV, so we could stay in the RV overnight. They were traveling with us. So we've got an RV who's towing a car. We have the U-Haul towing a car, and then me and my mother-in-law in the back. And we hit the snow. We hit the rocks, right? And it was at this time that we're like sliding and I'm watching everybody in front of us, our whole family, our lives, our pets, everything, sliding. We see, you know, car accidents off to the side and people pulled over. I'm like, but what do you do? With this caravan, there is no way to turn around on a two-lane road going through the mountains. We have to keep going forward. It's the rocks and the current has taken us. There's no going back from this point. So we're going, and I have to admit, 
my thoughts went to, well, this was a bad idea. Apparently, we're not even supposed to move to North Carolina. I mean, that's, you know, my thoughts really jumped out there. Like, this is a sign. I believe in signs, right? This crazy storm, this crazy experience, obviously, we're doing something wrong. Because if we were in alignment, I thought, if I was in pure alignment with everything, the universe would make this beautiful sunny day for us to move to North Carolina. So obviously I'm doing something wrong, I thought. And we're sliding up and we start descending. And you can see over the valley in front of us, it's clear down below. We're still in the, the snowy part at this point, but you can see down. And there was a double rainbow over the valley. And at that moment, my hope returned. That was the moment that I thought, ha, huh, okay. Maybe this is going to be okay after all. Not without its challenges, but it was for me that reminder that God is present in everything, even that snow, even that windy road with its bumps, slippery ice. God is still present. And the rainbows for me was this reminder, God saying, it's okay. You're going to get through this. I'm here with you no matter what it looks like. So have we all had these opportunities in our lives to journey in some way this path of transformation, moving from one way of living to another way of living and being in the world, trusting those crazy voices in your head that say there's something more, there's something more to do, calling you forward to something. The story of Jesus in the boat calming the storm comes to mind with all of this. This is in Mark chapter 4, verses 36 through 40. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat. So Jesus and his disciples are going just as he was. I like that too, just as he was. You don't need to pack everything, right? Sometimes just going is enough. Other boats were with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. The wind ceased, there was a dead calm, and he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Even in the middle of this great storm, Jesus exemplifies this idea of knowing that God is present in it. The very essence of God, the beingness that keeps the stars in alignment in the universe, is present in that storm. And when we turn to that awareness, we can say, peace, be still, from the awareness of God in us, speaking to that environment. Now this is the, the physical, right? Looking at the physical, what's going on. In unity, we like to look at what's beyond the physical as well, the metaphysical aspect of this. And Jesus representing here the Christ nature that is in all of us, that very nature that is aware of this presence of God in all things, that nature that calls God Father, it is so intimate. So when we turn to that Christ presence in the middle of perishing in a storm, when we hit the rocks and we turn within, to that Christ, the Christ says, peace, be still. And we feel that. That transforms everything when we know in that moment, right, the protectedness. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. Like a parent enfolding a child, afraid of the dark. We are enfolded in God's love in everything that we go through. 
And when we take that further, it is that Christ's nature in us that called forward the change in the first place. It was that voice inside of us, our highest nature calling us forward to be all that we can be in the world, to express that divinity outward. So then it is the same voice, the same energy that calls forward the storm because that is what we need in that moment. So rather than Jesus getting up there and going, all right, storm, you listen to me. We don't want none of your stuff up here. Or ignoring it, right? Turning to the disciples and going, what storm? I see no storm. He acknowledges it. Peace be still, he rebukes the wind, saying this doesn't have power over us. Classic example of denial and affirmation, right? Deny it power, not deny the thing. Deny it power. And then claim the truth. Peace in this moment is our true nature as we move through this. I read an interesting take on this passage recently, too, that suggested perhaps Jesus did not rebuke the storm and say peace be still to the storm but to the disciples peace be still so when they're all anxious of the storm right he is speaking to the core of their being be still in this perhaps the wind was still raging perhaps the water was still sloshing onto the boat but the moment they heard those words and felt that presence right there. They were able to embrace what is, and now maybe somebody said, okay, John, you got the bucket, all right. Peter, broom, here you go. Let's mop this up, let's get this taken care of. When we get centered in that, get centered in that peace, we know what is ours to do. And sometimes there's action to take, not just like, okay, sure, still raging, still, still water, Let's all just sit and meditate. But take action. What is mine to do? And move forward in that. So I propose that we all become aware that there are rocks. There are storms. There are situations that seem out of our control and they're going to happen. Because unless if you are a rock, change is going to happen. And even rocks experience change, right? They just might not be conscious enough to move out of the way when the river's washing over them so they don't erode or whatever. So we're going to experience change. It is in our nature to grow, to go on this hero's journey of life and to share that with others, that they can open to that Christ nature within as well. So, I propose four steps. When the rocks are looming, when that voice is calling you and saying, let go, and you're still clinging right here, in whatever it is that your life circumstance is, but you're hearing the call to let go. Number one, pray. Right there, pray. Not to get rid of the rocks. Pray to remember God in everything, right in that moment. Pray from the awareness of God. Because if we do that first, and then the rocks come, we come to them, it's not so bad. If we wait till we're in the middle of the rocks to then pray, it's more challenging. So begin your journey with prayer. Number two, take a deep breath. And let go. Now, once we let go, there's a very important part, and this is number three, which is surrender. And I don't mean to wave your white flag and say, I give up. I'm turning back. This was more than I thought, or you can just have it. I don't want it anyways. But to surrender into the process. Surrender into whatever shows up and trust whatever shows up as an opportunity for growth and transformation. 
And fourth, just as we do with any prayer experience, end in gratitude. Even when you're in the rocks, say, thank you, rocks. Thank you, rocks. Thank you, storm. Because it will transform your life and the way that you approach it when we say thank you for what is. I know this from firsthand experience, right? When I resisted the rocks, man, it took me a whole lot longer to get through that period. It was so much more challenging, and it was struggle. The whole thing was struggle. I wasn't seeing the opportunity until years later, and I looked back and went, oh, that's why, da, 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 da. And now it happens, and I'm like, ah, here it is. Here it is. We're going to grow. We're going to transform, and it might be challenging. But I know we'll get through this. It has completely transformed that process. Robert Brummett, near the end of the book, says, Each of us who is going through a transition is a potential hero. Again, that makes the rock seem a whole lot better, right? I am a hero. For we are leaving our old, familiar world to venture into unmapped territory, not knowing what fate befalls us. Like the ancient mythological heroes, we will encounter the dragons of fear and self-doubt. We will engage in fierce battles within our soul. And ultimately, we will, if we persist, discover the treasure, the holy grail, the wonderful gift of freedom and power that each transition promises us if we but have the heart to take the journey. Do we have the heart today to begin our journey? Whatever is calling us to let go of something that doesn't serve us anymore, move forward. Imagine yourself as the river creature floating over the other villages in your crystal clear water, enjoying life, sunning maybe, the rays come down, feeling that warmth of God with you. And as the others point up to you and say, ah, you are magnificent. I want to be and do what you do. And then you can turn to them and say, I am no more magnificent than you. All you have to do is let go. And that is our goal today. And with that, we will take that idea, that concept, into our meditation today. Thank you.